Hi, this is Mike Lahanian, Client Technology Specialist at Dell. And today I'm here to review the Dell UltraSharp U3224 KB. This is the world's first 6K IPS black panel technology display. Uh, before I start, uh, again, my name is Mike Lohanian. I do work for Dell. However, this is my own uh, personal YouTube channel. So if I say something wrong, I own that. That is on, on me. Uh, so quick review of the specs and we'll dig into this display. Uh, like I said, it is 32 inch. Uh, that resolution on there is 6144 by 3456. Uh, it has a 2000 to one contrast ratio. So very high contrast ratio and supports 1.07 billion colors. Uh, because of that and the color accuracy that we have on there, it is 99% DCI-P3, so Digital C Cinema Initiative uh, P3. It is also certified display HDR 600. Uh, for the excitement of a lot of people, this is a Thunderbolt 4 um, display that supplies up to 140 watts of power delivery back to the notebook. Uh, it is also a hub display. Uh, which means we have the docking uh, built into the monitor itself. Uh, as you can see on top here, I do have a uh, 4K digital overlap HDR webcam. Uh, I've got two dual 14-watt uh, speakers that are uh, forward-facing and, and kind of at ear level. Uh, we also have a neat little feature here. It's a pop-out uh, that gives you um, your USB ports that are easy to access to, and you can put that back in. Um, it also uh, allows you to connect up to two uh, systems to this display at the same time. So I have auto KVM built into it, which allows me to do things like picture by picture or picture in picture. And it even um, supports the auto sensing KVM, which means all I have to do is take my cursor and move from one side of the screen to the other, and I jump PCs. We'll dig into all this and some more on that. So let's, let's take a look at it. So let's start by answering the question, you know, what is IPS uh, black technology? Um, IPS black technology, it's a, um, a panel that Dell has been working closely with LG to uh, develop. Uh, there are three things that really does well. Um, it produces deep black colors on the display, has higher contrast ratios than a typical IPS display, and it has improved color accuracy. So these are really, really beautiful displays. I'll start off by saying I, um, I switch my displays out about every one to two months um, just to, so I know what each monitor is like to work on. Uh, a few months ago, I went from an IPS black uh, 4K display to a uh, 5K non-IPS black, and it was almost disappointing um, how much uh, better color accuracy that IPS display was. I just didn't realize it until I, I took it away from myself. Uh, so it is a beautiful, beautiful display. Um, what IPS uh, black will deliver are uh, four, up to 41% deeper black levels um, than you get with a traditional IPS display. Um, it's 1.2x better in color accuracy. So the colors I'm producing um, are, are more accurate. And it has a 1.4x improvement in the contrast ratio from a wide viewing area. Uh, so you hear about you know um, IP uh, panels, you hear about uh, VA and TN, uh, panels. A lot of times people point to VA panels because they have a very high contrast ratio. Uh, well, this IPS black with a 2000 to 1 contrast ratio uh, is similar to a VA panel. Um, where it excels is a VA panel. When you look to it from, a, from an angle, you lose that um, uh, contrast ratio where uh, the IPS black technology holds that um, contrast ratio much, much better in a VA. So you get a VA type panel with the uh, reliability and uh, brightness of an IPS um, display. Um, when we say contrast ratio, and you'll hear that 1,000 to 1, and here we're saying 2,000 to 1, what that represents is the difference between solid black and white. So when I say 1,000 to 1 contrast ratio, that means that the white image is a 1,000 times brighter than the black image. In this case, with the IPS black panel, it is 2000 times brighter than the black pixel on there. So it gives you that real high contrast ratio, which gives you much, much deeper blacks. It gives you better gray scaling. Um, so if you've ever seen a picture, let me see if we've got one here I can bring up on the screen. Um, there we go. And this is gonna be hard for you to see because I'm filming this in 4K and this is a 6K display. 
um, that is IPS black. Um, but a lot of times you get a scene like this where you have very dark blacks in there and then you've got bright reds and whites from the fire and then you have that smoke. Uh, that is very hard for a display to replicate um, because what happens is the light colors tend to wash out the blacker colors. Uh, but in a white uh, IPS black display, those hold more true. Uh, not only just for uh, images, but even when we're talking about uh, text that we're reading, uh, the text is much, much more uh, crisp. Now, uh, last time I filmed on, I did a, a YouTube on the 27 inch uh, IPS black uh, display and Someone said, hey, why don't you put a full black display on there and turn out the light so we can see if there's any bleeding. So I'm gonna pause here real quick and um, turn off the lights and I'll put on a, a full black display so you can see that. Okay, I did my best to try to get rid of the um, light coming in front of the display so you could actually see um, you know, the, the, the blackness in this. So uh, what I've done is I've put a uh, pure black uh, on the display and what I'll do is I'll put a contrast on there. I'll put up a, a, a white dot on there. Um, you know, this is, again, like I said, it's a very difficult thing for a display to do because of the, um, uh, the washing, but having that solid black color all the way through. So you can see there wasn't a whole lot of bleeding um, in that display. And I know I'm recording in 4K and this is 6K, um, but this is um, um, absolutely stunning. And so what's the difference between resolution and pixel density. Um, you know, I got to admit when I first got it into monitors and and started studying them, I, I didn't quite grasp the concept of pixel density versus resolution. Um, and if you think about, um, you know, the two different resolutions, uh, the U3224QB being a 6K um, has, uh, in a sense, how they do it is how many pixels do I have across, which is 1,644. And how many do I have vertical, which is uh, 3,456. I multiply that together and I get 21 million something, some change. And that's how many pixels I have in this 32 inch uh, display. Um, but what if I had say a 40 inch display with that same resolution? I'd have the same amount of pixels. Uh, so just telling it it's resolution doesn't tell me. A, a, a 40 inch version of this display um, wouldn't necessarily have a better image than the 32 because of the pixel density or what they call pixels per inch, which is a great way of measuring it. This is why this is getting a lot of fanfare. This has a really great uh, pixel density rating to it, being that it's 6K and 32 inch. So this has a 223 um, pixel density. And how pixel density is measured is basically they take a, a square inch of a display and they diagonally draw a line and say in that square inch, how many pixels does that line actually um, cross? Uh, they use a Pythagorean theorem to uh, make the calculations on that. So the higher your density, the higher the number, um, the better the image is going to be. So it's a better way to compare, to, to, get, to get an idea of how clear the image is going to be. You know, and for instance, um, you know, uh, the, the little brother of this, the uh, U23, uh, uh, I'm sorry, U3223QZ, which is a 4K 32 inch IPS black display, you know, its pixel density is uh, 140 uh, versus the same size, but higher resolution, we're at 223. Um, if we take it even a step down further, there's a P3223DE, which is a QHD or 2K, um, resolution 32 inch display. It only has a pixel density of uh, 93.24 uh, pixels per inch um, on it. So this hitting a, a 223 is a very, very dense amount of pixels in a small um, space. So hopefully that gives you an idea of, of how, how to rate pixel density. Let's take a look at the front of the display here. There's definitely some features here that make this unique compared to uh, some of the competition. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice is the uh, uh, 4K webcam that we have up here. This is a beautiful uh, webcam. It's actually the same technology that I'm using to record this uh, video um, off of. Uh, it is a digital uh, overlap camera. Um, it does 4K uh, at 30 frames per second. Uh, if you want to do some uh, faster frames, say 60 frames per second, you can take it to full high definition so you can scale that down. 
It is a HDR with the CMOS sensor built into uh, the camera. So there's a lot of layering in here. Uh, we actually use the same engines in this that a lot of the outdoor security cameras have. Um, because you think about an office environment today, um, you know, especially working from home, you get things like natural light, you get uh, darkness at, at nighttime, um, you can have bright, brightness coming from behind you that kind of washes you out. Uh, this camera does an incredible job at adjusting to those uh, light changes. And as you can tell, the, uh, the image quality on here is, is really good. Um, this, this camera is tiltable, so you can see I'm, I can move it down. That's up to a 20 uh, degree tilt uh, that I can do. And you can change the uh, viewing angles on this, uh, the field of view. Um, you can go from 65 to 80 to 90. Um, in fact, let me show you from a reverse um, off of this camera that I'm recording on. I'll show you some of the, um, uh, the, the viewing angles. So um, let me put it at 65 at 65 at 70 and that is 90 degrees so you can see so i had it uh it did that 65 degree angle so you can adjust um how much you want to uh have of of the image in there and then it's also self adjust you can you can um you know take it and, and pull the image in very tightly if you want so it does have adjustability to it um the camera itself on, on top of being a wonderful um webcam uh, it also supports what we call Dell Express Sign-In, and I personally use this on my um, work machine. I've got the uh, uh, Precision 5470 um, uh, notebook, uh, and uh, it has a, a few different features on this. Uh, one of them is it's compatible with Windows Hello, um, and particularly Windows Hello facial recognition. So uh, instead of me typing my password in every, every morning, um, I, I use my face as my login and it gets better than that. It also has presence detection. Uh, so my login process uh, in the morning is I sit down. That's all I do. When I sit down in my chair, the presence detection actually uh, recognizes somebody there that uh, activates the camera. Uh, the camera itself turns on the infrared, the IR, which is what used in Windows Hello for the facial recognition. It says, yep, this is Mike, and it logs me into my machine. I don't touch anything, I don't do anything, I just literally sat down. Um, it also has walk away um, uh, detection as well. So when I get up to go grab a coffee or uh, take a dog on the walk, when I walk away from my system, the camera goes in the presence detection says, no one's there. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock down the machine. Um, this is great, not only from a security standpoint, but from a user experience. Right? I don't do anything. I sit down, I log in, I walk away, it logs off. Uh, from an end user, I'm not doing anything, which is wonderful. Uh, from an IT security standpoint, I know that machine's always locked down when someone's not there. I know they're authenticating properly. Uh, so just an absolutely outstanding uh, camera build. Uh, let me kind of demonstrate this. I'm gonna walk up and hopefully you can see this. Um, it's looking for me and it saw me and logged in. It was uh, that quick. And if you notice, the camera even uh, shut. It was uh, open uh, when it detected somebody. And when it took um, my facial recognition log me in, it shut it again. Um, and you can physically see it and, and actually hear a little click. Um, we also have said, and I said this in the beginning, we've got dual 14 watt speakers and that's at um, kind of face level. You know, the older versions that we used to put it kind of down below. Um, it's better here, 14 watts, those are, those are really decent uh, speakers. And it also has the, um, uh, microphones in it. Now, one of the things that, that you don't see yet, and I'll bring my finger close to it. I'm not going to touch it. You see, I, I kind of got close to it here. Um, these buttons light up. So if you're doing a Microsoft Teams call or a Zoom call, um, what this gives you um, are buttons to be able to, like here, answer a call. So someone rings you, uh, you can press it and answer it. The next one over is volume down. The other one's volume up. Uh, the next one's microphone mute. And then finally, you can physically turn the uh, shutter off on uh, the camera. So it has a physical shutter that you say, hey, I don't want to be on camera and I make sure it's closed. You'll actually physically see uh, that it, it is covered up. And then as well as you can press it and come back on camera. Uh, that is something a lot of people really like. They just want to make sure that they're, they're not being um, spied on or, or accidentally on camera. But the mute button, I can't tell you how, how great that is because you know how many times you've been on a call and you start talking and everybody's like, hey, you're on mute. Um, typically, you're fumbling around trying to figure out how to unmute yourself. 
Well, it is right there at your fingertips in the front of you. So it's easy to unmute yourself or, or mute yourself. One thing that separates a lot of, you know, high-end monitors from lower-end monitors is the uh, ergonomics of the uh, display itself. Uh, so um, the U3224QB um, is very adjustable. Um, you know, you've got your tilt. I can go 21% down, 5%, uh, or I should say 21% back, 5% uh, down, um, by degrees uh, down on, a, on an angle here. Uh, I can also raise it and lower it. So uh, I can go all the way up. I believe that is about six inches or 160 millimeters um, from a up and down. I can take it all the, all the way there. Um, I can also put it in um, portrait mode as well. Um, usually that's app developers um, or code writers, I should say. Uh, they like to do that. So I can uh, take it, you know, this way uh, and have it all this way, or I can take it all the way around uh, to the other side and take it this way. And then you just go in Windows and tell it that you want it to be a um, portrait mode rather than a uh, landscape mode. Uh, so it is very flexible and shiftable in the um, ergonomics of, of the display. Now also in the back, and let me come around here uh, a little bit. Um, we've got a nice, uh, easy to navigate, um, what we call um, OSM or on-screen menu. And it's in the back here. And all you do is put your back and you can, you know, your finger back there and you can feel a little joystick. And when you hit it, it'll bring up the uh, menu on here. And I can change things like color, the display, the, um, the sharpness, um, can do my picture in picture, picture by picture. So if I don't have software to control it, I can actually get into um, the display and, and, and uh, change the settings. But this is very convenient compared to the old ways where you had those little buttons and you weren't sure what you were pushing, uh, if it was uh, correct or not. So uh, very nice from the ergonomics. All right, uh, before we start uh, looking at these ports, I want to um, kind of define a couple of things. I'm going to show in the next segment what a hub uh, display is, basically the docking uh, built in. So I want to kind of explain stuff that will lead up to that. The first thing I want to talk about is upstream ports versus downstream ports. And I know this can be confusing at first, but if you if a port is listed as an upstream port, it typically means you're plugging the PC, your PC directly into the monitor and by the connection uh, that you're putting in there, it's looking at all the other downstream ports uh, for uh, connectivity. Um, and the downstream ports are reversed. So say like I had a, um, a camera, a USB camera, and I plug it in a USB-C downstream port on the monitor, the USB, um, the upstream ports are going to be looking for those devices and connect to them. Um, so that's that kind of difference between upstream and a, and a downstream. But look at number one, um, we've got a um, security lock, right? Uh, fairly expensive monitor. So if you got it in a public place, not a bad idea to put a King's Engine security lock on there and, and tie it down. Second is the power uh, intake on there. Number three, uh, kind of important, it's HDMI 2.0. Uh, that's special. That's the newest one. It's a 48 gigabits per second transfer rate. So very, very fast. Um, especially considering you got a 6K monitor and, and uh, uh, it's, it's a nice port to have. The sec, uh, number four here is a mini display port 2.0. You know, the first time I saw that, I was like, um, that's funny looking. I, I've seen it before and then an old port. And then I dawned on me, it's like, oh yeah, you know, like on our precision engineering workstations, our towers and our small form factors. The graphics cards a lot of times are mini display port because they're trying to put like four of those connectors in a graphics card. Um, so that's actually really convenient because if you have one of those, you then you've got a direct connection to that without having to have a crossover cable, right? You're going mini display port to mini display port. Uh, number five is a, um, a Thunderbolt 4 downstream port. Um, so that is going to be um, feeding um, out of the monitor. So if you were going to daisy chain, say, a second monitor, uh, this is the port you would use because uh, that is going out. So I can actually hook a second monitor and make um, have daisy chain two displays from that, that monitor. Uh, the next one, uh, number six, is a USB-C data-only upstream port. Um, 
and that will come in when I show uh, the when I, I hook two PCs to it. Um, I can actually hook two PCs at one time to this monitor, and I'll show that towards the end where I'm doing that, and I'm using that port to um, uh, look for USB ports on there outside of the next port, which is number seven, which is a Thunderbolt 4 upstream port. And this is the one with the extended power range um, with uh, display st stream compression and also supports display port alt mode. It's a lot of things I just said in there. Um, one of the things that people get confused is USB-C itself is just a connection type. Uh, there are you know, really kind of three varieties of it today. There's your standard USB-C, um, you've got your USB-C with a display alt mode, um, which means you uh, put in um, your support for display port through that cable, which gives you better monitor um, experience. Um, the final one is Thunderbolt. Um, Thunderbolt, um, I, I like Thunderbolt a lot. Uh, the difference between, say, um, DisplayPort Alt Mode versus Thunderbolt is uh, Alt Mode. It has four uh, lanes of traffic in it, um, and its its max speed is 32 gigabytes per second, but it is four lanes. And why that's important? Um, if you think of like having, you know, four funnels and you can pour water into each funnel, but say you're using uh, two funnels, you're pouring enough water into it. Uh, the third funnel, you're over pouring and, and you can't get enough water through it. And the fourth funnel, you're not pouring anything at all. Um, it's kind of inefficient in that way as compared to Thunderbolt that actually is tunneling. So it's one big pipe uh, that you're able to pour all the water into, or in this case, all the data in which you have a, um, uh, 40 gigabit per second uh, transfer rate, but I'm not limited by the channels. So um, really great that that's Thunderbolt. Also for your Mac folks, um, and I know there's you know, a lot of following on this the 6K with the Mac folks, it does support uh, the Mac uh, OS, um, obviously because of that, that Thunderbolt port. Um, it does have some, um, and I we gotta be careful here. It, we do say it supports 140 watts of power delivery to the notebook. So when I plug my um, notebook into it, theoretically, I can get 140 watts. And I say that um, because it's what they call the new extended power range um, on that. So typically what you've seen in the past with um, USB-C um, alt mode um, is only around 90 watts of power. And that is something that's called um, SPR or standard power range. And standard power range, which has been the norm, is only 90 to or sometimes 100 watts of power that you can deliver to a notebook, and that's it. Uh, well, now there's a new standard called extended power range that allows 140 watt. Actually, theoretically, it can handle up to 240 watt. The issue is, is that both the monitor and the PC must support extended power range. And right now, um, only the Precision uh, 5680 supports that. And the reason is, is the, the notebook and the monitor have to um, communicate and um, kind of you know, talk about how they're going to deliver power to that unit. And if you don't have an extended power range PC, it will just revert to that 90 um, watts of power uh, delivery, which for the most part isn't a big deal. Like I have my precision uh, that takes more than 90 watts of power. Um, all it does is slow charge my, my notebook. So even though I'm getting 90 and I require, I think 120 uh, watts of power, uh, all it does is a slow charge. Theoretically, I could get to a point where I'm using more battery than I'm uh, filling it back up and and you know the system would shut down but you know i've been doing this now for oh gosh i don't know um you know six months and i have yet to run out of battery in fact i've never never made it where it was down below 90 percent. so not a not a big deal but that extended power range is um coming as a, as a new standard so it'll be more applicable in the future uh number eight is we've got four usb a uh, downstream ports um and they're super speed, uh, 10 gigabit per second, USB uh, 
3.2 Gen 2 ports uh, right here. That's really nice. I mean, that's where I'm going to plug my devices into this monitor that are going to go through um, number um, seven, which is my uh, Thunderbolt upstream port. So my PC is going to come here. It's going to be looking for those ports for um, whatever is in those. Uh, and then finally here, or not finally, we've got a, um, um, a RJ45 port. So that is um, your Ethernet connection. So uh, I can plug my Ethernet in here. And when I plug my notebook into it, I'm connected through uh, Ethernet. Uh, the other thing finally is that we've got a, I love this. Uh, one of the biggest complaints I think everybody has with monitors, it's like, yeah, you put lots of ports on here, but man, they're hard to get to. And if I just need to do things like charge a cell phone or something like that, it's a pain in the butt. Well, this is a little push down. You, you push up and it drops down and it gives you um, uh, two USB-C downstream ports with 15 watt, and they're based on USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2, 10 gigabits, and one USB-A based off USB 3.2 um, uh, 3 Gen 2, uh, 10 gigabit. That is very, very convenient um, as you go to, and I'll show a little bit later um, how you can use that. So what is a hub display? Um, this concept started getting, getting popularity, gosh, a couple years ago. Um, and really what a hub display is, in the past we've had a uh, docking station, like this is the WD-19 TBS Thunderbolt um, dock, wonderful, wonderful dock. But traditionally, this is what we'd put at our desks, right? We would put this, we'd connect the mouse and keyboard to it, we'd pick a big AC adapter uh, to it, the ethernet, a um, couple other options you could you put in, you connect it to your displays and have that on your desk and you would connect this into your notebook. Well, this concept started being incorporated inside the display itself. Um, which is a wonderful idea, right? Um, for for multiple um, reasons, you know, you think about what has changed in the past few years, and and now that we're coming back to work a few days a week, um, you know, we're coming into concepts that uh, aren't necessarily traditional, right? You know, in the past you may have had assigned a cubicle or assigned office, and that's where you worked every day and you set up everything you liked. Well, now you're doing hoteling and hot desking, and you're walking in and and uh, uh, you're borrowing an office or borrowing a cube for the day as you work. And that's really what set this concept of, of hub displays um, you know, on fire. So we've taken that docking station capability and built it in. And you can see here, I've got a um, uh, Alienware keyboard, not your typical keyboard you'd find on a, on a business system, but an awesome MX Cherry keyboard, nevertheless. I uh, also have a mouse. This is plugged in the USB downstream ports on the display. Uh, I've got a wireless dongle connected to one of the other USB downstream ports on there as well. And from that, if I uh, had Ethernet, I could plug the Ethernet into the monitor. And, um, you know, that's basically a downstream uh, port as well. So all I have is this one cable, right, that, that comes out. And this one cable supplies everything. It gives me up to 140 watts of power for my 5680. Um, it connects to the... Um, uh, webcam, the speakers, the microphone, the keyboard, the mouse, uh, all with one connection, right? So there's not, it's pretty convenient. So if I walked into a, a say, uh, a hoteling situation at the office, right? And I get a, a uh, cubicle I'm buying for the day or borrowing for the day, uh, everything's set up. I plug that one cable in and I'm, I'm set. Um, very convenient, very easy. I didn't have to, to do anything, right? You can see now it's about to turn on and the, the keyboard lit up uh, all pretty. The mouse is, is working here. Um, all, all very simple. And think about some of the things that solved, right? Uh, if you're coming in the office a couple of days a week, you know, how likely are you to remember your AC adapter? Uh, yeah, so you forget that and it's like, oh shoot, I gotta go home or fi find someone to borrow. Now I don't have to. Um, or in the past, you know, you had your notebook and you had your AC adapter with you and you got into work and you got your hands and knees underneath the, the cubicle to plug in, um, you know, the uh, notebook into the outlet. Now you don't have to do that. Uh, so very, very simple, uh, very easy, very clean. It cuts down on the amount of uh, cables. You know, typically would be nice as a wireless mouse and keyboard um, altogether. You wouldn't have any of those cables. So all you'd have is the power to the monitor uh ethernet cable and cable to the notebook you know very very clean easy solution uh so that is the concept of of a hub 
Now, uh, the U3224 uh, KB also has another nice feature, right? I talked about this a little earlier, this drop down here uh, that gives me my USB ports. So say I'm in that same office um, and I'm coming in and I borrow the room uh, and hey, I've got my cell phone and I wanna charge it. And you know, in this case, I've got a nice little wireless charging pad that I, I bought off of Amazon, it's kind of nice. Um, I can simply take this, right? And plug it into the powered USB port. I'm gonna either C or A um, in there. Let me get it the right way since it's A. And look at that, right? This is lighting up now and hey, very good fix. Very, very easy, very convenient for that port to be there. Um, but that is the concept of a hub display and the concept of you know what hoteling and hot desking is. So KVM functionality. Um, typically, when you do it, it's kind of designed around um, having a desktop and a notebook. And the reason I say that is you've got you know one Thunderbolt um, uh, port uh, upstream going in there, and this supplies your power and your your Ethernet and your KVM in it. And the second one, you kind of have to do some workarounds. You've got to um, uh, do, I did a um, USB to HDMI um, in on this. And then um, I had to plug power into the notebook because I'm not supplying power down like I am on this one. And then I had to do a USB-A um, or USB-C cable to the um, upstream uh, port in the back of it. So the second notebook really has kind of three cables sticking out of it. Um, you know, it's got that HDMI, it's got the power, and it's got the um, USB-C. I need all three of those to be able to control it. But this one's done with a, a single one. But I find this to be the most typical setup. Um, usually it's a home office. Hey, I've got this great display. I want to have um, my work PC and my home PC, and I can just jump back and forth um, between uh, the two. And what I've done is I've... Um, uh, loaded the software called Dell Display Manager. It is free. Um, it comes with the price of the uh, display. It doesn't matter if you have a uh, Dell uh, PC, you can have an HP, a Lenovo, um, uh, even we have Dell Display Manager for Mac um, that allows you to simplify this setup. There's a lot of great things for Dell Display Manager, uh, especially around carving up. So I, I suggest you look at it. Uh, but if you download it, it makes this wizards uh, setting up um, having two PCs on, on one system, uh, very easy. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the caveat that the, why I showed that there. Now, um, the other thing I do want to say is you do have to have admin rights, uh, for Dell display manager, uh, to be able to load it on. So if it's your work PC and they don't give you admin rights, uh, just put a ticket in and, and request temporary admin, admin rights to load Dell display manager. Um, most companies will allow that because it is assigned, um, uh, application um, and then get that loaded on your system. If you don't, you can do toggling back and forth uh, using the joystick and the um, on-screen uh, menu OSM uh, to be able to do it, but this is a lot easier. And the way I've got it set up right now is I've got the mouse and keyboard and you can see I've got it connected to uh, the 5680 here and I've got a slideshow going. So, you know, it enter, you know, back and forth. You can tell I'm changing um different things on it so you can can see now um if i want to go over to my 57 um uh, or 5470 over there uh i've created through dell display manager a hotkey where i just do alt one that's what i decided to make it you can make it anything you want and now what's going to happen is the mouse and keyboard are now going to be connected to uh, my screen here and here i'll show you that I've got full control of it. And there's my, my dog, Bunny. Um, I did a post the other day and everybody said more Bunny, less Mike. So <laughs> I did incorporate her there. Um, but you can see now the mouse and keyboard are now controlled by my other, other notebook. If I need to go back to this one, I just do again, Alt-1. And the mouse and keyboard now are gonna be assigned to this. And now I've got both screens on here. I can actually take that down and you can see I'm pulling it here. And that's you know the KVM, um, that back and forth. It's really, really nice. Saves a lot of room, especially if you're a home office and you got your work in your home PC, being able to share that. 
Now, you can do picture and picture and picture by picture. And that would be where you split the display and you have half uh, the computer on one side and half on the other. Um, I think on a high resolution display like this, I don't know if I would I would do that. Um, I played around with it a little bit and it just came out funky with some of the resolutions that I that I had. Um, typically, I would save that that function for maybe a 4K or below in resolution and it will show up better. Um, it is also a little tricky to set up, a little trickier than just doing the uh, toggling back and forth on there. But you can, right? You can do picture and picture and picture by picture um, on this, this setup. So uh, hopefully that makes sense and uh, you like what you saw. It's, a, it's definitely a great way to, to set up your computers. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Dell UltraSharp U3224 uh, KB 6K IPS black display. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments. I'll be uh, happy to get to them as soon as I can. Uh, again, this is Michael O'Hanian, Client Technology Specialist from Dell.